Fighting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question, and here's one that the happy people have to say. Okay? You bet the champs in good old New York are. Listen, now in New York, we wait for days to see a guy called Willie Mays, because Wheaties keeps him leaping high to grab those line drives on the fly. And Yogi Berra's the Wheaties lad, whose batting style makes pitchers sad. No matter how they throw the ball, that Yogi belts it through the wall. And look, both Willie Mays and Yogi Berra turn to Wheaties for extra energy, because there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties plate. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be doo 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 and all okay. okay. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I am Silver. Hey! For many weeks, people in small towns in the territory surrounding Black Rock lived in terror of the Harwood gang. Monty Harwood was playing solitaire in one of several shacks when a smooth-looking man entered. Hi, Barry. What's up? I brought news from Black Rock. Good. Sit down. Yeah. The sheriff and a party have left to hunt you and your gang. <laughs> <laughs> you call that news? We've been hunted by a lot of parties. Sure, but don't you savvy? That leaves the town unprotected. Uh-huh. Look, I went to work in the cafe as a gambler so I could tip you off, didn't I? Now when I bring you news, you Hold say... your horses, Barry. I'm interested, but I also got word from another one of the men that the sheriff brought in a bunch of cow folks to stay while he's gone. Hey, where are you going? Call in Lefty. Hey, Lefty, come in here. I could have told you about those cow folks. Then why didn't you? Well, you didn't give me a chance. Anyway, with the plan I have, they won't make any difference. Now, get this. Ten miles from here, in a small town called Woodville, there's a traveling road show that's stranded. You know, one of those carnival-type things with concessions and so forth. I suppose you want us to raid that broken-down road show, huh? <laughs> Frankly, I don't see what that road Will show you is. you hold on and listen? I know the owner. He calls himself Colonel Lamont. I used to travel with the show. Now, his performers and help are quitting on him. But for a few hundred dollars, he could get them to come to Black Rock with a show for a one-night stand. Look, here's my plan. We stake the colonel to what he needs to pay his performers. I'll tell him I'll supply their wagon men and other workers needed. And that's where you and the gang come in. Hmm. Beginning to see what you're driving at. <laughs> Not bad, huh? I still don't see uh, Look, 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 Lefty. You and Pete will bring the gang's horses and hide them in the gully near the showground. <laughs> that show will get the cowpokes out of town tomorrow night. And while they're at the show, Monty and the gang will ride into town and grab everything they want. The colonel won't know we're using them until you've cleaned out the town and left. <laughs> right, Thunder Perry, I think your plan will work. Lefty, tell the gang to get ready to ride to Woodville right away. Right, boss. That evening, the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, had made a temporary camp in a secluded grove of cottonwoods 
Just beyond the edge of town, Toto, who had gone into town, returned with news. Oh, scout, oh, oh fella. Easy, scout. Easy, fella. Well, Toto, any news in town? Ah. Sheriff leave town this morning with posse. Go hunt Harwood gang. Harwood is smart. He might decide to raid Black Rock while the posse's out looking for him. Well, there are plenty of cow hands guarding town, Kimasabi. Sheriff haven't come in from ranches. But maybe there'll not be so many tomorrow night. Oh, why do you say that? When we see feller in town tonight, putting up big posters that tell about traveling carnival. It play at carnival grounds tomorrow night, uh, just outside town. Hmm, that carnival is coming at a bad time. Carnivals are something cow posts can't resist. Oh, that's right. They usually advertise well in advance. Well, me hear feller at cafe say that carnival travel during night and get to town at dawn. It's coming from east of here. Otto, we'll stay around in case Harwood's gang does cause trouble. I'd like to know why that carnival is coming into Black Rock so suddenly with so little advance notice. Uh, that's plenty strange. Before morning, we'll ride over to the east trail and watch for it. Right now, we'll turn in and get a few hours sleep. <laughs> The faint rays of dawn were in the sky when the Lone Ranger and Toto, who had ridden a short distance out the east trail, pulled to a stop behind some big boulders to wait for the wagons of the road show. We'll be able to observe the wagons closely from here without being seen, Toto. Oh, that's right. Look, Kimasabi. You see wagons coming over rise and trail yonder. Yes, you're right. They'll be passing this point. There are several big wagons. Here they come. Savvy fellow who ride with Colonel. What do you mean? Well, him, Jeff Berry, gambler at Cafe in town. Me here, him never have much money. Yet the Colonel was thanking him as a person who got him out of the hole in Woodville. Isn't that right? Mm. Berry must have some reason for wanting that show to come here quickly. The Lamont Road show is usually well advertised in advance. Otto, there's something about all this that doesn't ring true. And we're going to find out just what it is. Montilda! Up town! After watching the show wagons approach town, the Lone Ranger and Toto returned to their camp. The Lone Ranger thought a while, then spoke. I want you to help me with a disguise, Toto. I went to Lamont as an old, bewhiskered fellow. He's soft-hearted enough to give me something to do. I'd ask to help take tickets so that I could be in a ticket wagon where I could talk to him. Mm, that's a plenty good idea. Me help fix good disguise. All right. Now, if I manage to get to the show, I want you to stay around town and keep track of what's going on. We'll arrange a signal so that you can come out and get in touch with me if necessary. Ah. Howdy, Colonel. Uh, can I have a word with you? Well, howdy, mister. You're here early. The show doesn't open till after supper. Yeah, sure, I know about that. Mighty fine show, I hear. Yeah, mighty fine. Why, well, I've been hearing about the great Colonel Lamont's road show all over the territory. Yes, sir. Well, that's fine, fine. Hope you'll tell everybody you know to come out here tonight, old timer. I'd uh, sure like to work with your show tonight. Uh, say a job like hip and take the tickets, maybe? Well, I don't know about that. <clears throat> you see, old timer. Yeah, you want to have a mighty big crowd? Yes, sir. Lots of cow folks in town right now. Well, uh, all right. Uh, but as far as the pay goes... <laughs> Anything you say is all right with me. And you're hired. I'll give you $2 and you can see the show free. How's that? Fine, just fine. I'm ready to start whenever you say. Well, you just hang around the grounds and enjoy yourself. Come here to the ticket wagon at 6 o'clock. Yeah, thanks to heat, Colonel. Bye, Jiminy. After this, I can tell all my friends I worked with the great Lamont Roadshow. Yes, sir. We'll 
We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. So that Bobby is a boy of nine. He can really hit that line. He's a star because he knows he's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Yes, it's a fact. Cheerios does give you real go power. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. And Cheerios is so much fun to eat with its distinctive O shape and its wonderful toasted oat flavor. So tomorrow morning and every morning, start the day right with a Cheerios breakfast. Then you'll hear people say, He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue... In his disguise as an old man, the Lone Ranger seemingly wandered aimlessly about the showgrounds. He came upon Lefty and two other men who, posing as roustabouts, were driving tent stakes. Hey, now this is the last... Oh, oh doggone, I clipped the end of my boot with that doggone belly. No. You're not supposed to use your foot for a tent stake. Right? <laughs> you sure missed it that time, mister. Huh? Yes, sir. Come near tripping yourself. Hey, who's that old coot? I don't... Oh, let him alone, Lefty. He's harmless. What are you doing around here, Grandpa? Go on, beat it. Well, it didn't mean no harm, mister. Seeing as we both work for the road show, I could just be in friendly life. You say you work with the show? Sure do. Got hired a while ago. Yeah, uh, help take tickets. Ah, newcomer, huh? The Colonel sure picked some old and decrepit, huh, boys? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, here comes Jeff Barry. Hi, fellas. Yeah. Hey, come along with the horses, and I was uh, wondering... Shut up, Jeff. Yeah, don't you see we got a big-eared goat keeping us company? Hey, who are you, mister? What do you want here? He's a dried-up sourdough Lamont hired to help take tickets. Uh, go on, on your way. We don't want you here. Go on. I, I, I'm leaving, mister. No use to get rough. <laughs> I'm leaving right now. <laughs> It was almost six o'clock when he was to go to the ticket wagon that the lone ranger, ambling along like an old man, passed a heavy growth of sagebrush. He stopped suddenly and looked around as he heard. That's part of the signal coming from that tall brush. Ty, what happened? Ty. You find out something? I think I have, Toto. I watched three of the roustabouts driving tent stakes. From the way they went about it, I decided they weren't roustabouts at all. While I was standing there, the gambler, Jeff Barry, came along. It's strange, him friendly with show workers. Yes, it is. Jeff Barry come to town early today. Him say him buy ticket, show ticket, and give ticket to everyone who come to cafe. Hmm. Could be that Barry's running a gambling concession at the showground. But even then, all those tickets he bought would take away any profit he'd make. Mm, that's right. Come back in about an hour, Toto, and give the signal. I'll be in the ticket wagon. I'll see what else I'm able to find out. Later, the Lone Ranger, posing as the old man, was in the ticket wagon with Colonel Lamont. So far, only a few people had come to the ticket window, so they had time to talk. The Lone Ranger asked seemingly innocent questions. It uh, must cost a lot to pay off all the folks you have working for you, huh, Colonel? Yep, it sure does, Pop. Seemed like I heard tell that you had poor luck over yonder in Woodville. Uh, were you really bad off? <clears throat> well, uh, all shows run into difficulties on the road. I uh, did sort of run out of funds. Temporarily, of course. Uh, uh, reckon you just walked into the bank and got them to start you going again. <laughs> Was that it? No, no, not exactly. Pop, it pays to make a name and make friends like I have. One of the friends I made came to me and offered not only cash, but men. See, my roustabout walked out on the show. My friend suggested I bring the show over here for a night. Well, what do you know? I uh, said it was a nice fella, Jeff Barry. Now, wasn't it? <laughs> there I go asking things that's none of my business again. Well, that's all right, all right. I don't mind telling you it was Barry. 
frankly, I never expected him to do a thing like that. But he did. Oh, there's how many, please? Uh, two. Two. There you are. Well, folks are beginning to come along. Soon I expect about everybody in town will be out here. Almost an hour later, the Lone Ranger made an excuse to leave the ticket wagon. He was heading for the place where he had met Tonto before, when he saw Lefty with Pete and Jeff Berry heading back behind the tent. Several other men were gathered there in the shadows. The Lone Ranger moved close enough to listen. I reckon everybody's here but Monty. He'll be along to tell us his plan. Marty. Now I'm sure those men are crooks. Hey, you. What are you doing standing here? Answer me. Please, please, mister. You're hurting my arm. Hey, kind of muscular for an old geezer. Hey, I'll hurt you worse if you don't speak up. I I was just, just walking hey, in. Is that you, Marty? Yeah. Found an old coyote standing here in the shadows listening. Get along there, you. <laughs> this you buzzard we were talking to earlier. Hey, you, I thought you were supposed to be taking tickets. Oh, sure, I am. I was only... He was re- listening to you fellas talking. Who sent you here to spy on us? Come on, speak up. Please, please, mister, that hurts. Yeah, so will this. <laughs> <laughs> you almost kicked him in two, Monty. <laughs> Monty's treatment angered the Lone Ranger. For a moment, his strong muscles ached to lash out and smash his tormentor. But he knew he had to take it and still act his part if he were to find out all he wanted to know. Lefty suddenly spoke. Hey, if he was standing there long, he must have heard plenty. No, no, honest, I didn't. I miss say, you heard enough to know we planned to raid Black Rock. But he won't get away to tell about it. Time up, throw him into that cupboard. Yeah, all right. Help me, Pete. Yeah, yeah. Pete, come on. At eight o'clock sharp, we'll meet in the yeah. grove where the horses are, then we'll hit for town. Monty and his men had dispersed, and it was well after seven o'clock. The lone ranger, tied in the covered wagon, struggled to free himself, but without success. Get loose somehow. <laughs> no use to tie me too tightly. Good thing they didn't gag me. Yelling wouldn't, however, do any good with all the shouting and other noises going on. I'll try our signal. Meantime, Tonto had been at the meeting place and waited for the lone ranger. Finally, above the carnival noises, he heard what he hoped to hear. Hurriedly, Tonto traced the sound to the covered wagon. He looked inside, then spoke into the dim interior. Kimasabi. Tonto, I'm bound hand and foot. Oh, get I was hoping you'd find me. He soon cut cords. There. Now, are you free? Tonto, the whole thing is clear. Harwood and his gang are working with his shell. Jeff Barry got them into it just for the one night, but the colonel doesn't know that. They plan to raid the town. They'll leave here at 8 o'clock. We don't have much time. We must find a way to get the cow pokes back to town to forestall and capture that gang. Well, how we do that? Them not listen. Wait, listen. There's one way I can think of. An old wooden building on the edge of town. The deserted mine building. What about building? It stands in a sort of rock quarry. We'll set fire to it. It can't spread to do any harm. But the glow will bring everybody back to town in a hurry. Come on, there's no time to lose. A few minutes after 8 o'clock, a red glow lit the sky in the direction of town. First one, then another of the men at the showgrounds noticed it. Then the sharp tolling of a distant bell cut through the noises of the midway. Hey, the fire bell in town! Look at the glow in the sky! We gotta get their panel! Stay there! Come on! Meantime, Monty Harwood and his gang had reached town, and leaving their horses openly at the hitch rack out front, they broke into the bank. All right, men, blow that vault. Be quick about it. Just hit the express office next. We'll have this charge ready to blow in a minute. Hey, what's that bell? Holy smoke. Look out the window. That glow means a fire. All right, thunder every hombre at the show will be here in a few minutes. Never mind that vault. Right. Grab any loose cash. Let's get to the horses' throttle. Come on. Come on. You arm raise across the street, throwing red. I get to the front window, cut him down. You gotta get out to the horse, All right? Hey, hey, the crowd's coming. Holy mackerel, look. Two arm raise this road between the buildings. We're heading to meet the crowd. Let's make a try for the horses now. Come on. Meantime, the Lone Ranger and Tonto met the men riding into town. Swinging around beside them, the Lone Ranger, still in his old man's disguise, shouted, The Harwood Gang at the bank! Hurry! Hey, they're coming out! Let them have it! We 
Breaking down the main street toward the bank, the crowd of mounted cowpokes forced the outlaws back into the bank building. Led by the Lone Ranger, some of them rode between the buildings to the back and dismounted. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. They can't get away now. They're trapped. Hey, one of them got out. He's running along behind the building. I'll get him. Monty had managed to get out the back. His gun was empty, and as he ran, heading for a grove of trees, he looked back. Reaching the grove, he stopped. Nearly old man, eh? <laughs> I'll break you in two. All right, try it. Hey, your voice. That punch. This is for what I had to take from you. Oh, I'll kill you. Oh, yes. The old man picked up that outlaw. Great day. Look at that. This will settle you, Harwood. Holy smoke, I can't believe it. An old sourdough like you beating up Monty Howard. Did you get all the others? Sure did. But the fire, we That's better just get... the old building in the quarry. No need to fight that fire. We set it to bring you men here. They bring horses, Kimo Tommy. Hey, wait, 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 there was a man who got me out of some trouble once, a masked man. I'd swear oh, almost... Oh, just a moment. Turning his back a moment, the Lone Ranger put on his mask, which he carried in his pocket. Then he pulled away the false whiskers. He turned smilingly to face the colonel. Well, now I feel well, more like myself, Sergeant. Why, why, it is you, my masked friend. That's right. Not when I suspected something was wrong, so I applied for a job at your show. Disguised as an old man. Oh, God. <laughs> I'll take the two dollars I earned for taking tickets, Colonel. <laughs> I always wanted to be in show business. At last, I'll be able to say I was paid for being with the carnival. <laughs> and here's your pay, sir. You, uh, all this has almost made me speechless. <laughs> That's unusual for you. Well, uh, we'll meet again. Meantime, don't trust everyone you meet. Let's go, Tonto. The men will take care of the outlaws. Adios, Colonel. Easy, Adios, gonna be right, sir. One, two, three. Oh, oh. By golly, he sure had everybody fooled. Yeah, yeah we want to know who that masked man is. <laughs> well, I'm sure Marty Harwood here would like to know more than any of you. Well, Marty, I'll tell you. That hombre is the Lone Ranger. Oh, and man. what? <laughs> Feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boyd. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.